So we're back and I'm here with Patty Mraz, Belle Ingham and Ali Campbell, who have started the fundraiser for the former CMI staff welfare fund that's on GoFundMe right now. Uh, we will be sending a link um, so that you can uh, donate to this really important cause. And I wanted to chat with them today and talk about um, the campaign, uh, why you started it. Uh, you're part of the larger Save Film House campaign, but um, this was a particularly urgent um, action. Uh, and uh, and tell us a little bit about that process. I guess I, yeah, it was just quite shocking to me to learn that people um, who'd been working with us for under two years weren't, weren't going to get their redundancy pay um and really it was also sudden i think uh finding out about some houses and eif is i if cmi is kind of bring into administration i you know it just um it was such a shock and it felt like there wasn't really much support available um and i really wanted to have have something there I'm, I'm glad Ali like reached out to me to like help organize it uh, because I agree it's a very good idea. I'm one of the former staff that's been there under two years and there's things like a lot of like my notice on a contract was four weeks um, but when claiming for government I'm only getting a week and there's a lot of people like me and people who have children who are in precarious financial situation and might not be able to find a job straight away. Uh, so I think this is very important to have um, and support people whilst they're looking for a job. Um, but yeah. Um, I think it's worth considering as well, Film House was very much a place where people progressed. So there were a lot of people who felt very invested in in um, the film industry and in cinema. When you got a job at Film House, it, it kind of meant something. So I think for people to have to make such sudden decisions about what they were doing next is really difficult. So, you know, the idea and I was approached about helping out was that you know this this would give people a sort of a cushion so they could have a bit more time to consider what their next steps were and obviously it's it's a really difficult financial situation for everyone um and you know having the concern of having no job might put people in positions where they won't have the chance to properly consider what their next career steps are so I thought it was it was really important that we made sure that there was support for staff to make good decisions um, and have a bit more kind of autonomy in what's been quite um, an unautonomous process. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you bring up a really good point, Belle, that, you know, this, this, um, the film house was one of the places as a former um, film exhibition curation student, the film house jobs, at, you know, and potential jobs was one of the places where people you know, very much we're looking at the start of their career in terms of in film and film exhibition and a long, long term career. So, um, you know, it's it's a huge, huge loss um, uh, for everyone. Now, can you talk a little bit about what I mean, how, how you kind of came up with the idea in terms of the structure? Like, I think one thing that Ali, you mentioned is to be really transparent about this. Where is the money going specifically, and where um, where would it go outside of if you raised more? And um, I'm also curious how you know how you feel about the uh, overall reception so far. So it's it's roughly thirty to forty people who are under the two years. So we want to kind of aim to cover those forty staff members. So that's where we've kind of come up with this number on a on a banded system to kind of cover people's different working hours. Um. And we're hoping to publish the, the the bank statements kind of every two weeks to just kind of give people a bit of clarity about where the money is going. Um, we're hoping to pay people kind of yeah weekly weekly um, increments of the monthly total. It's 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 one month's pay at the the living wage, but the real living wage of ten pounds ninety. Yeah, that's that's kind of the structure of it. How are you feeling about the reception so far? Uh, your, I mean, your goals are, you know, a, is fifty thousand. We're already, I think, at this stage, around nine thousand. That's that's a, that's, and there's also quite a lot of people who have donated. But of course, we're, we're here to get the word out for more people to donate. How, have you felt people have been, you know, very receptive? And uh, how, how have you felt overall of of around this? I think it was like um, we started off really well and people were very people are still very generous and I've shared lovely messages uh, when donating and it's been so surprising to see how 
so many people like genuinely care and want to help. Um, I've noticed that it's very much like beaks and troughs, <laughs> which is a thing we would say at Foam House. Um, with the donations, depending when like an article would come out or something, we would quite we try to share it with different people and sources. So whenever we would a thing would be published promoting it, uh, we'd go for a peek. So we're trying to keep the momentum going so people don't just forget about it. Uh, because as I said, more and more people are reaching out, more former employees asking for financial help. Um, and it would be good to be able to help them. And uh, yeah, I know there's people that have uh, dependents and uh, have worked under two years and have quite a specialist's job. Um, so it'd be a shame if they were not able to continue in their current career path uh, because they need to just get any job they can at the moment. Um, yeah, I'd like to just support people to progress in their area of expertise and not lose it. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're here to try to figure out a way to do that. Uh, so we'll, we'll continue to help as much as possible um, to find a way to spread spread the word. Patty, you've also been very instrumental in putting together the Safe Film House um, website, uh, which shares a lot of stories as well. Um, uh, yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Because I thought that was a really lovely um uh, yeah, a, a way that you guys have organized the website between um, the, you know, t telling the stories and telling sort of more, more, more of the history or more of like the ethos of Filmhouse. Um, and I think that's, that was uh, fantastic. I was um, approached by a former uh, person I worked with at the vigil, Filmhouse vigil, and she has shared with me being like, why don't you guys, because I was ta talking to her about all the different things Filmhouse did, about education, about things about programming, how people developed in their roles, etc. And she said, why don't you guys make a website to actually highlight all the things you did, all the festivals you've worked with, all the things that other cinemas did not do, all the things that you were like experts at because this is not known to everyone because as she was saying like as much as I went to film house because I like the independent cinema I did not know about like all the things that you're telling me you've done now so not many people will know about how important this is to the community because there's so many different things that film house was doing whether it was for young people for the elderly for people from other countries having festivals in their uh, home uh, language I took the idea on and I spoke to a couple of the former employees, uh, heads of education and some of the projection team. Then I spoke to others as well and asked them what they thought of the idea and like making a thing of every department uh, or and inform people what we actually did so it doesn't just disappear into ether. So there's like s solid concrete words telling you this is what we did and this is what we'd like to continue doing and this is why it's important um so i've um reached out to the person andrew who has made the initial website and asked for his help and i was like would you be okay if i did this because we as former employees feel it'd be good to highlight all the things that filmhouse did and i've got contacts who will be able to help me build the blocks uh of text etc uh, so i just started like a website from scratch I've asked, uh, I've contacted David Boyd, I've contacted Rod White, I've also contacted other people for stories. Uh, because first, one of the last emails uh, that was received in the admin inbox was from Undine, which is also shared on Twitter. And it was really, really lovely. It was shared to us in the WhatsApp, former employees WhatsApp group. And we we're like, oh, wow, this is nice. And when Ali and I were talking, we should add something like, sweet because this would be a really good idea to like also like show the emotional side of it how much impacted people's lives so we also started the stories section of the website not just oh this is what we did and we're keep on get we keep on getting submissions and it's the stories are really sweet and moving there's people who have like confessed this, that they've watched their first ever short film uh, at film house and it's like there's been quite a few like really nice stories heartwarming and I think they're important because it's it lets people express themselves and their love for film house um 
over because it meant a lot to people that aren't just employees. It also meant a lot to the community. Um, yeah, so we're just trying to like make people aware of what a great thing it was. <laughs> I yeah. think that's yeah came from mainly. Yeah. I think yeah by having that awareness and and like asking people for their stories and asking them to reflect as well I think that's that's brought together the community really nicely people have been able to connect and think about it um and and I think that's made um members of the public feel part of our community as well I think a lot of us who worked at Filmhouse also had similar stories before we worked at Filmhouse um, you know, it, it's a real community and it's been really nice to, to have the story section where people have been able to share things um, to kind of build a community of of cinema lovers, of film house attenders, of people who who have been touched by film house in some kind of way. Um, so having the stories thing is kind of built into the, the wider um, website that Patty's worked on in terms of just stories and, you know, creating an oral history for ourselves. I just add a wee thank you to the Edinburgh Short Film Festival. They've been really supportive and they, they've they um, let us kind of just do a wee introduction before their their screenings. Um, and it just, people have been so generous there um, and it was very kind of them to let us uh, fundraise there. So it's just a thank you to them. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's, um, as, as you, you all articulately and really importantly expressed, this was a community and uh, the work that um, the former CMI staff was doing was was very, very specialized and a very important um, part of our community. And it was, and and it really showed how passionate everyone is around, um, around film, but also the specific, specific type of a cultural sort of offer that wouldn't, and, and you know, education and everything that wasn't. So I, I think everyone um, really appreciates the work that you have done right here to 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 create this GoFundMe um, for the former staff. And we should really help as much as possible, which is why we're here. We, again, we'll send the link is there. Um, you could definitely just go to the save, right, go to savethefilmhouse.com um, to get to the link as probably the easiest way correct? Yep. Yeah, so please go there and support um, this GoFundMe. And uh, Patty, Bell, and Ali, thank you so much for your time. Mm -hmm.